This video provides a technical insight on how to perform a pronation maneuver in patients affected by severe acute respiratory distress syndrome. Special attention will be paid to patient safety and ergonomic aspects that can make pronation easily performed by the intensive care unit staff. It has recently been demonstrated that by optimizing selection and treatment protocols, pronation of patients with severe acute respiratory distress syndrome is associated with significant benefit in mortality. The advantages of performing pronation cycles in physiological terms have been known for decades and include improvement of oxygenation, decrease of physiological death space with increased functional residual capacity, better tidal volume distribution with increased involvement of dorsal regions, better ventilation to perfusion ratio, easier drainage and aspiration of secretions. Yet, clinical benefit on overall survival is observed only when certain requirements are met. Pronation cycles should be reserved only to severe patients. They should be started early during the disease course. Cycles should last even more than 16 hours and their discontinuation should not be time-based but rather decided on physiological criteria such as the reduction of ventilator requirements. Neuromuscular blockade generally cannot be avoided. Pronation cycles are indicated in patients affected by acute respiratory distress syndrome with a ratio of arterial partial pressure of oxygen over fraction of inspired oxygen of less than 150 mm of mercury. Pronation cycles should be started within 48 hours after diagnosis. Pronation cycles are not indicated in patients with elevated intracranial pressure, in those with massive hemoptysis, in case of cardiovascular instability with a high risk of requiring defibrillation and cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Recent sternotomy, large ventral burns, severe facial or neck trauma and spine instability are other contraindications. Finally, untrained intensive care unit personnel should not perform pronosupination maneuvers. A briefing to clarify the role of all staff members involved in the procedure is advised. The number of required operators may vary starting from a minimum of three. If extracorporeal membrane circulation is ongoing, at least one more operator should secure the movement of each cannula. Ventilation should be set to deliver no more than 6 ml of tidal volume per kilogram of ideal body weight, and neuromuscular blockade is indicated. A slide sheet is necessary to easily perform the mechanical part of the maneuver. Close attention must be paid to all central lines and urinary catheter, which should not interfere with and must not dislocate within the maneuver. Suction of endotracheal tube, nasogastric tube and the oral cavity are necessary. Once that the patient will be pronated, the placement of anti-decubitus devices increasing protection of pressure points is mandatory. Assessment of pressure points during briefing, especially airway, face, shoulders and anterior pelvis is recommended and will help with their further management. The mechanical part of pronation may be carried without significant effort if a slide sheet is correctly prepared and used. The slide sheet is folded into two symmetrical parts and passed under the patient's body between two operators so that the folded side stays on the first operator's side. The neck should be gently rotated towards the intended rotation side. The arms should not be placed along the patient's torso, instead hands should be placed on the patient's thighs. The leg opposite to the intended side of rotation should be crossed on the other one, that means the right one on the left one, if we want to rotate the patient to the left. All these measures allow the body axis of the patient to be easily rotated towards the side of intended rotation, making the maneuver both easier for the operators by reducing mechanical effort and less traumatic for the patient by controlling stretch forces. It is strongly recommended to have an anesthesiologist or other airway specialist on site while performing the procedure. While preparing for the procedure, a slide sheet is folded in a rectangular shape and is passed under the patient's body. It has to be wide enough to be easily controlled by both operators. It is advisable to slightly rotate the patient and to initially make more folds on the first operator's side in order to obtain a smoother passage of the slide sheet. The head is gently turned and accompanied to anticipate its rotation, while the hands are put on the thighs and not left along the torso. The right leg has been crossed on the left one in order to rotate the patient to the left. The operators make sure that all wires and lines, including pulse oximetry, urinary catheter, central venous and arterial lines are continuously checked and must be loose enough to prevent both line disconnections 
and development of the cubitus ulcers, which are caused by devices eventually lying under the patient's body. EKG electrodes are usually removed and replaced once pronation is completed. If chest or abdominal drains are in place, they must be clamped before performing the maneuver and their lines must be placed to the opposite direction in order to anticipate the rotation and not to make crossings once the patient is pronated. The same approach should be taken in the presence of extracorporeal membrane circulation cannulas. In this case, more operators are needed and must secure each cannula to the body throughout the maneuver, so generally two, but in cases such as venous venous arterial ECMO, even three more operators are necessary. In order to pronate the patient, the first operator grabs the upper fold of the slide sheet and pulls it to roll the patient on his left side. The second operator holds the patient while the third operator keeps the airway secured. The first operator then pulls the slide sheet again and completes the rotation. Every action must be well synchronized between the operators. In this example, the first operator is setting the pace, but any member of the team may be selected as team leader during briefing before performing the maneuver. A third operator is mandatory and oversees the ventilator circuit. He must make sure that the circuit will not be placed under tension by making it as loose as possible. He must also keep the tube secure to the patient's mouth or tracheostomy. This connection may cause loss of alveolar recruitment with the decrease of the patient's respiratory system compliance. Once the patient has been pronated, operators can grab the lower fold of the slide sheet and easily take it off. The ICU staff must now optimize the patient's position in order to decrease the incidence of complications. The team must continuously reassess the position of all lines and wires to prevent unintended disconnections and kinking. No device should lie under the patient's body in order to reduce the risk of developing the cubitus ulcers. To further decrease the incidence of the cubitus ulcers, Pressure points are identified and optimized, with pads, guards, and pillows where needed. Special attention must be paid to bony surfaces, face, and the eyes, for which specific glasses are available. If the patient has a tracheostomy, we suggest to tilt the patient torso on one side to decrease the pressure on the neck area. Extra rotation of the shoulder must be carefully avoided in order to reduce the risk of luxation and brachial plexus injury. Finally, if the patient has been tilted, the bed can be slightly tilted to the opposite direction in order to restore the desired horizontal position. Possible complications of pronation maneuvers and ventilation in the prone position include airway-related complications such as increased oral or endotracheal tube secretions causing endotracheal tube occlusion. Endotracheal tube misplacement is another possible danger, especially during the pronation and supination maneuvers which may be complicated by accidental extubation. Cardiovascular instability may occur temporarily, increasing the need for vasopressors. Eventual kinking of catheters and risk of loss of vascular and urinary catheters need careful and continuous assessment of these devices. Increased gastric residuals and elevated intra-abdominal pressure are reported complications. As shown previously, much effort has to be done in preventing pressor ulcers and facial edema. Brachial plexus injury must be prevented by careful positioning of shoulders and arms. The incidence of all complications is significantly lowered in the presence of trained intensive care unit staff. Pronation cycles are life-saving procedures for patients affected by severe acute respiratory distress syndrome and should not be delayed when indicated. Awareness of possible complications, ergonomic technique and organized teamwork are the keys to safely perform pronation maneuvers.